Welcome to St. Francis. Will you please join in our opening hymn, number 395, We Three Kings of Orient are, 395. Please rise. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of the Epiphany, the day in which the Lord was revealed to all the nations. It was revealed that all are invited into a relationship with, Lord, with the Lord Jesus Christ, that all are rec- called to recognize His Lordship. Hoy celebramos la epifanía del Señor en que la luz de Dios era manifestado al mundo. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the true light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Gloria in excelsis Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O 
O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds covers the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Medan and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise be to Every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, give your judgment to the King, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore. Sustias fresca la justicia y la paz hasta que falte la luna que domine de mar a mar del gran río al confín de la tierra. Lord, every nation on earth will adore. kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute, but kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate, all nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore For 
he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy, and save the lives of the needy. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios Hermanos, han oído hablar de la distribución de la gracia de Dios que se me ha confiado en favor a ustedes. Por revelación se me dio a conocer este misterio que no había sido manifestado a los hombres en otros tiempos pero que ha sido revelado ahora por el Espíritu a sus santos apóstoles y profetas. Es decir, que por el Evangelio también los paganos son coherederos de la misma herencia, miembros del mismo cuerpo y partícipes de la misma promesa en Jesucristo. Palabra de Dios. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in, Be in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the, the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we see that this Feast of the Epiphany, this revelation of the light of God, the light of Jesus Christ to the nations, right, especially to these magi, these kings, these wise men, whatever you want to call them, that have come from from distant lands, this revelation to the whole world of the light of Christ provokes a variety of reactions in folks, as as we see in the Gospel today and just in the way that, that the Gospels recount the story of the birth of Jesus. One of those is kind of the the general tenor of most of the Jewish people that we hear about in the Gospels. The Jews have been prepared by God for a thousand years, by prophets, by him giving them the law, in preparation for the coming of this moment, for the coming of Jesus, for the birth of the Messiah. They've been told about the glory of the Messianic age. They've been told about everything that the Messiah will bring. But the unfortunate reaction that's recounted in the Gospels of of most of the Jews, it seems, or at least those who are most vocal, um, is they can't get past the immediate political situation in which they find themselves, the subjugation of Israel to Rome. And so they can't conceive of a Messiah who comes to do anything other than the one thing politically that they're most looking for, which is freedom from Roman oppression. So the Messiah comes but they're looking for something totally different. And most of them, because of this, miss out on his coming. They want a Messiah, but they want a Messiah on their own terms and in their own way. Another reaction we see is that of Herod, who the Gospel says is greatly troubled by the birth of this new king of the Jews. Herod is... um, about as horrible and tyrannical of a, of a ruler as you can possibly imagine. And the, I mean, murdering members of his own family to maintain his power, murdering tons of, of little children who are younger than two years of age because he's afraid of this newborn baby, this newborn king of the Jews. He sees this child as a threat to his power. And that fear, he just can't deal with it. He wants nothing from this would-be Messiah that might threaten him. Another reaction we see is that of the Magi. The Magi who are these, these seekers, these religious or scientific figures, wise men from a foreign land, probably from somewhere in Persia or the area of what's now you know, Iran and Iraq. Whoever they are, they came from really far away. And all they have is a star. They're following this star that they're convinced is a revelation from God to lead them to the true king. They have very little to go on, but their, their desire to find the truth is so great that they'll travel halfway across the known world to find it, to, lead, to follow where God leads them. They want the truth. They want what God wants on any terms, wherever they can find it. So I think the the obvious question that follows from this is, where are we at? The response that we make, I mean, we can't not respond, right, to the coming of God into the world, to this manifestation of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ to the nations. We can't not respond. So what's our response going to be? Are we going to be like many of the Jews who, although we've been given so much, right, we've been given, we're here, we've been in some way 
the faith has been handed on to us. We have some knowledge of what the Catholic Church teaches of who Jesus Christ is. We've been given a lot. But are we looking for a Messiah, for a Savior, only on our own terms? Are we so caught up on what I need and what God has to do for me that I'm not actually able to receive Jesus for who he is and for the work that he wants to do in my life? Sometimes this is a result of, um, like many of the Jews of Jesus' time, kind of a mixing of political and religious things, right? Uh, What takes priority in my life? Certainly, our faith and our belief in human dignity and human beings being being created in the image and likeness of God, that's going to have political ramifications. There's going to be things that follow from that. But do those things take precedence? Do political positions or parties or whatever, anything, does it take precedence to my faith in the Savior and the Son of God who came, who was born, who gave his life for me? Do we throw away that gift of what's been revealed to us, looking for a Messiah only on our own terms? Or are we sometimes maybe more like Herod, right? Who is so concerned with his own power, with his own life, with his own comfort, his own situation, that he can't allow anything to intrude on that? Are we greatly troubled at the coming of this Savior? On the, on the Feast of the Holy Innocents, in the Office of Readings, one of the fathers of the church had some great insight into Herod. And this is what he says. He says, Herod, to save his kingdom, resolves to kill him, resolves to kill Jesus. Though if he would only have faith in the child, he himself would reign in peace in this life and forever in the life to come. This baby, Jesus, who was born, is Herod's savior too. He's born to be Herod's savior too if Herod would accept that. But his earthly pursuit of power, his earthly, the earthly kingdom that he's created for himself gets in the way. Again, the right order of things is reversed. And he can't allow God to come into his life. I think what's especially noteworthy is Herod, who's this great king, who's got armies at his disposal and all of this, is just absolutely crippled by fear of a little baby. Again, this, the fathers of the church say, before Herod, speaking of Herod and his killing of all the, the children in the area of Bethlehem, he says, before Herod destroyed these children in body, fear had already destroyed him in his heart. It's a brilliant insight, I think, into what often causes this misplacement in our lives, this reversal of what really ought to be first, what really ought to be at the center, ends up somewhere out of the center because of fear, a fear of what might happen if I really give Jesus control of my life, fear of what that king might do, fear of losing control, and that fear can be crippling. Very often, the evil one, if he can't get us to directly sin against God and to reject God, he's very happy to just paralyze us with fear, to paralyze us, to kind of freeze us from taking another step towards the Lord because we're afraid of what that might mean. And I I always like to call to mind what Pope Benedict says about this. Pope Benedict XVI always said, God never takes anything away from us. He only gives. He only brings freedom. So this fear, it's, it's falsely based. It's, it's based on a lie that God wants to take something and not give us abundant life. Fear is never a reason to make a decision in the spiritual life. And we see that Herod is absolutely crippled by that fear. So again, are we in some ways like Herod? Maybe as we encounter Jesus in a deeper way, there's an invitation to draw nearer to him. But we're crippled by fear of what that might mean or what the consequences of that might be. And then there's the Magi who again go to the ends of the earth in search of the true God. Having known nothing really of the scriptures or the, the, the prophets and everything that was promised about the Messiah, but just based on that little glimmer of what they've experienced, that little glimmer of hope, the light of the star, they'll follow God's revelation to the ends of the earth. The one that we seek 
is worth spending absolutely everything on. Spending our entire life seeking him, seeking the true God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. God desires to give us the absolute freedom that is necessary to seek Jesus wholeheartedly, to respond to the manifestation, to this revelation of the light of Christ in the world with freedom to make ourselves disciples, to put ourselves under the lordship of Jesus in a deeper way. So this fear that Herod has that Jesus, this little baby, is a threat to him, Jesus is a threat. He's a threat to darkness. He's a threat to death. He's a threat to sin and ignorance. This is what he came to destroy. But to the abundance of life, to the true happiness that the Lord desires to give us, he's not a threat at all. He's, in fact, the only way and the truth and the life. As we encounter more and more deeply this light of Christ, how are we going to respond? How are we going to respond to the Lord who was born for us, who on this day, this epiphany, manifests himself, manifests his light to the world? The eternal light of God breaks forth in the person of Jesus Christ. How will we respond to that light? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the scene will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray today for our brothers and sisters across the entire world. For the church, that it may be a clear sign of inclusion, showing the world that Christ is not only for us, but for all people, we pray. <clears throat> for those who worship God under other names or theological understanding, especially in the Abrahamic tradition, we pray. For loving and compassionate attitudes, that open us to people of other races, nations, cultures, or beliefs, despite the risk, we pray. For the courage to confront those who practice exclusion because of fear, misunderstanding, a lack of knowledge, or political gain, we pray. For immigrants and refugees, who seek safety in foreign lands and long for humane and compassionate care, we pray. Lord, hear our for those within this community, in our neighborhoods and beyond, who are overlooked, underappreciated, or in any kind of need, 
and for the ministers and ministries that serve their needs, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all people of, people of all religions. Just pray that they would come to see the true light of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ and that they would come to know him as the way and the truth and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks that you have manifested your love for us in the person of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see the light that shines upon us and to respond to this great love with faith. Make us faithful disciples of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping. O angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Mira con bondad, Señor, los dones de tu iglesia, que no consisten ya en oro, incienso y mira, sino en lo que por esos dones se representa se inmola y se recibe como alimento Jesucristo, Señor nuestro, el que vive y reina por los siglos de los siglos. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery 
of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Santo, santo, santo es el Señor del ser universo. Llenos están el cielo y la tierra de tu gloria. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Bendito el que viene en nombre del Señor. Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna en el cielo. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
Del mismo modo, acabada la cena, tomó este cáliz glorioso en sus santas y venerables manos. Dando gracias, te bendijo y lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, Tomen y beban todos de él, porque este es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en conmemoración mía. Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe. Anunciamos tu muerte, proclamamos tu resurrección, en el Señor Jesús, en el Señor Jesús. Eso, Padre, nosotros, tus siervos y todo tu pueblo santo, al celebrar este memorial de la muerte gloriosa de Jesucristo, tu Hijo nuestro Señor, de su santa resurrección del lugar de los muertos y de su admirable ascensión a los cielos, te ofrecemos, Dios de gloria y majestad, de los mismos bienes que nos has dado, el sacrificio puro, Inmaculado y Santo, pan de vida eterna y cáliz de eterna salvación. Mira con ojos de bondad esta ofrenda y acéptala, como aceptaste los, don, los dones del justo Abel, el sacrificio de Abraham, nuestro Padre en la fe, y la oblación pura de tu sumo sacerdote Melquisedec. Te pedimos humildemente, Dios Todopoderoso, que esta ofrenda sea llevada a tu presencia hasta el altar del cielo por manos de tu ángel, para que cuantos recibimos el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, al participar aquí de este altar, seamos colmados de gracia y bendición. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia, y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should stand in my room. Only you say the word in my soul. the 
Gloria, Gloria, in excessis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excessis Deo. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. A reminder that we are looking for a number of strong volunteers to clean up the various Christmas trees at the parish on Monday, January 8th at 9 o'clock. Please come if you can and help. On Friday, January 20th, all of us will have a wonderful opportunity to get some insight into what life is really like for young people who are undocumented. Come see Hope College students, faculty, and staff present a reading of the play, Just Like Us. See the bulletin and parish website for details. Do all things in the name of God, and you will do them well. Whether you eat or drink, work or sleep, you will profit greatly before God by doing all these things as God wants them done. These words come from St. Francis de Sales. And on Saturday, January 27th, we have a tremendous opportunity to learn more about our patron. Father Dan Lannon, a, 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 I, I can't say it, and he is a son of our parish, who returns to lead us in a mini retreat on the teachings of this pillar of our church. Mark your calendars for this extraordinary opportunity to invigorate your new year with practical thoughts for infusing God into our daily life. <sighs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, 
who today appeared in the world as a light shining in the darkness. May God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we hit gladness, men of old did the guiding star behold. As we hit joy, they hailed its light, leading onward, brimming bright. So most glorious Lord. Narrow way, and when.